days go on the Lord's day. Oh, how I loved you well. I am happy. It makes me glad to rejoice at thy breath. Praise the Lord. With this, I welcome you all to the Sunday School Preview, uh, Lesson 46, which is the topic is Suicide Forbidden. Suicide Forbidden. Opening prayer. Almighty Father, as we cast our cares and bodies to you, please come and attend to them all. Please don't let us be ashamed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our Bible passage is found in Romans chapter 5. Verse 1 to 8. Romans chapter 5. Verse 1 to 8. Therefore, be justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom also we have access by faith into his grace. Wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation work at patience, and patient experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely, for a righteous man, we wonder, yet for adventure, for a good man, some will even dare to die. But God command, commended his law towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. May the Almighty God bless the world in our heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Our memory passage is in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, which is cast upon him. For he cast your all your care upon him, for he care for you. Casting all your cares upon him for he carry for you. In our introduction, suicide is the act of intentionally causing one's own death or deliberately killing oneself. Research show that approximately 90% of people who have died by suicide were suffering from a mental illness at the time. The most common mental illness reported is depression. Also, many suicides happen impulsively in moments of crisis with a breakdown in the ability to deal with life stresses such as financial problem, relationship breakup, or chronic pain and illness. In addition, expressing conflict, disaster, violence, abuse, physical, 
sexual, emotional, verbal, and so on, discrimination or loss, and a sense of isolation are strongly associated with suicidal behavior. Intense sadness and or hopelessness, not caring about activities that used to matter, withdraw from the family, friends, sport, and social activities, substance, drug, alcohol, abuse are some of the common signs of suicidal thoughts. This topic, this topic, suicide, suicide forbidding, is timely, particularly when one consider what is operating in our nation recently. All from all are capable of promoting suicide. We have, as an example, we have a high rate of insecurity. We have uh, uh, kidnapping. We have ritual killings. And all other vices are common things in our nation today. So this topic is very timely. And I pray that as many as who hear this the message today, God will use us to restrain anyone who, who, anyone who is on the verge of committing suicide in the mighty name of Jesus. Suicide is very evil. As, as suicide is capable of terminating appropriately destiny of man. Interrupt permanently People from reaching their goal. So, at all costs, suicide is something that must be avoided. And God will deliver everyone from suicidal thought in the mighty name of Jesus. Our lesson today have two lesson outlines. Outline number one. Is biblical view of suicide. Biblical view of suicide. And uh, the second outline is antidote to suicidal thoughts or attempt. So I want to start with the lesson outline one. Biblical view of suicide. The Bible views suicide as is, as the same as murder, as the meaning of uh, suicide is suicide means self murder, self destruction. So Bible views suicide as the same as murder. As I say, self murder, which is contrary to God's commandment. And what what is God commanding we are considering here? Is found in Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. That says, Thou shalt not kill. In another, trans in another translation says, Thou shalt not murder or do not murder. Why? Because in the first place, the lies did not belong to you. God gives the lies and takes the life away. No one has the right to, to take his or her own life. Job chapter 1 verse 21 uh, confirms this. It says, the Lord gives life and it takes life. So, no one has the right to take his or own life. Furthermore, the Bible mentions six examples of people who committed suicide. They were, number one, Abimelech. In Judges chapter 9, Verse 54. He committed suicide because of the fear of, of shame. How, how, how will he be said 
that it was a woman that killed that, 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 that killed a great warrior. So he ask is uh, he, he, he ask is Amon Amon Biela to kill him. Number two, a sample of suicide in the Bible is Saul. Saul in First Samuel chapter thirty-one verse four. Saul also fell upon his, his war because of the shame of 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 of, 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 uh, of lost in battle. Number three. So when Saul Amon Biera in First Samuel chapter thirty-one was four to six, when when the Amon Biera saw that his master was dead, himself. Fell on his on, or fell on his sword and died likewise. Number four, a sample of people that committed suicide is Ahitophel. Second Samuel chapter seventeen verse twenty three. Ahitophel was a great prophet. In the past, none of his war, of his prophecy, fell to the ground. But on this particular occasion, his counsel was rejected. And, for, and because of shame, but well, we are people who say, ah, uh -uh, you great prophet. For fear of shame, Bible says, he went to gather all, uh, all his things together and died. What of number five? The person that committed so in the Bible, Simri, first Kings chapter 16 verse 18. Because the people plotted against him and is lost as a king. He ran into the palace of the king and burned the palace down upon his head. Self, 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 self murder. And lastly is Judas Iscariot. Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27 verse 5. Judas is Iscariot. The one that betrayed Jesus Christ. He collected money. And so this master, when he discovered uh, the, 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 the way things was going, then he decided to return the money back to the uh, to the to the elders and the scribe, but this, but the, but refused the money for him, and then he, he went and then committed suicide. He hanged himself. These are some of the examples of, of people that committed suicide. In the Bible, I pray you will not turn to be among the number in the mighty name of Jesus. The actions of these six people were in contravention to the word of God, which says, Thou shalt not kill. This is disobedience, and this is a sin to the Almighty God. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Some circumstances have led to people in their past to the point of almost taking their lives. But thank God they did not take took their lives. They almost, because they went through some challenges that all, that, that crushed them to the point of one, or to the point that somebody can say, ah, I want to give up. But thank God they did not give up. For instance, Solomon's endless pursuit of vanity led him to the point where he hated life. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 17. He hated life. What has his eyes not seen before? What has he not acquired before? He, he, he is a man of wisdom. But he pursued all these things. And at the end of the day he said, vanity Upon vanity, he hated even his own life. Another one is the prophet Elijah, that great prophet that called down fire down from heaven. When he was pressurized by Jezebel to the point, to the point that God would take his life, 
after the great conquest on the Mount of Carmel. And it was reported to Jezebel what Elijah did. Jezebel said, Today, today, I will kill you. And Elijah began to run and said to God, God, it is enough. Kill me now. First Corinthians, uh, first King chapter 19, verse 4. It was pressurized to the point of dying, but it did not die. Commit suicide. Another one is a uh, prophet. Jonah, who was very angry when God allowed Son to scourge his head, that he fainted and wishing him to die. Jonah chapter 4, verse 8. And that great apostle, Apostle Paul, was another example of people who was pressed to the point of taking their life, but they did not. Apostle Paul was pressed out of measure and was the spear of life. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. These four people that you have mentioned about, mentioned about did not commit suicide despite their prevailing circumstances. The circumstances they went through were so severe that anyone can, 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 can want to conclude and say, I want to take my life. But they did not. Why? One, Solomon did not because of the fear of God in him. Because he kept the commandment of God. And the third commandment is do not kill. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 says, let us hear the conclusion of no matter. Fear God and keep his commandment. Elijah was another person who was pressed to the point of taking his life, but he did not. Why? He received the call at that critical moment when he was going through challenges. When he desired death, God sent his angel to come and comfort, comfort him. God sent his angel to comfort him. First King chapter 19, verse 5. It was fed twice. First in, in verse 5, and secondly in verse 7. God comforted him. Another, another man is Jonah. Jonah. Jonah, because of the challenges he went through, God allows son to squash his head to the point of death. And when he complained, he received admonition from God. This is, this is a kind of gentle or mild rebuke from the law. Jonah chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. And then verses 8 to 11. Then Paul was also pressed to the point of, 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 of taking Israel alive, but he did not. Why? Because Paul depended on God who was able to sustain him. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 to 10. And Peter, in First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Cast thy body upon the Lord, for he care for you. Cast thy body upon the Lord, for he care for you. So these people, these four people, did not commit suicide. They spread their prevailing circumstances. I don't know the circumstances you are passing through. Don't tell me it is now for you to commit suicide. If you commit suicide, you will have disobeyed God and then you will have sinned against God and you will have terminated your destiny. 
you you will have appropriately and permanently uh, brought an end to your goal. Now to lesson, lesson number two. Lesson number two. Antidote to suicidal thoughts and attempt. Antidote to suicidal thoughts attempt. Number one, antidote is allow God to prove his love to you. Allow God to prove his love to you. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says, By our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, a poor is love. And abundantly, abundantly in our hearts. So allow God to prove his love for you. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says, We do not have an high priest. We do not have an high priest that is not touched by the feelings of an, an, an infirmity. Whatever we are passing through, Jesus is passing through with us. And that brings us to number two. Uh, points number two, uh, uh, number two antidotes. Remember that Jesus identified with you in your times of trouble and humiliation. Bible say in, in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 2 to 6, a born our grief and carry our sorrow. A born our grief and carry our sorrow. Number three. Antidote is that this is time for you to recall that Jesus has suffered for you and has died for you to remove your guilt and the weight of sin. Romans chapter 8 verse 2 says He who gave us his only begotten son to die for our sin will he not also give us all good things to enjoy. Recall this goodness. Praise the Lord. Number four, antidote. Believe and be assured that Jesus will forgive and repair your brokenness and restore your joy. Isaiah chapter 1 uh, Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 and 19 He says Remember you know the former things, or the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Believe that it is not yet over, because God has not said it is over. God is giving you a new beginning, so you don't you don't have to call it quit. You don't have to take your life. Number five, antidote. Reveal your hope that Jesus will definitely rescue you if you trust him and call on him to help you. Psalm 61 verse 1 and 2 says, In that your over overwhelming trouble and challenges, call upon the Lord to help you. Jeremiah 3 verse 3 says, Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, things that do not know before. Things that do not know before. Things that do not know before. And number six, learn to say my times are in your hands. Whether tough or easy. The Bible says somewhere that go the fig tree refused to bear fruit. And there is problem and challenges in the land. He said, yes, I will praise the Lord. This is in the book of Abaku. Abaku chapter 3. He said, if the fig tree refused to yield, and there's no sheep anymore, everything goes from, even with all this, I will praise the Lord. Brethren, as I conclude, I want to, I want you to go to the, to the, to the book of Hebrew, 
chapter 12, verse 2, that says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, oh, for the joy that was laid ahead of him, despise the shame, endure the cross, despise the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the Almighty God. It, was, it wasn't an easy thing to go to the cross. But Jesus has endured because he, he was able to see the invisible. He was able to see the joy that lies ahead of him. But if only I come out of this, then that is joy that is laid ahead of me. I want you to pray in that occultic scripture that God will give you vision. Vision, vision, beyond, vision of a better tomorrow, beyond the present situation. And when you have such vision, you'll be able to endure your present challenges. And I, I, I believe God with you, your day of joy is very, very near. So in summary, do not kill yourself. Do not kill yourself. Trust that God will restore you again. Trust that God will restore you again. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Almighty Father, we pray that those who are depressed and are planning to commit suicide will be healed even now in the name of Jesus. To open their eyes to see that tomorrow is looking good. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying.